bridging TradFi and DeFi to buy US treasuries on chain? Sounds a bit like a contradiction, but Ondo Finance is making it a reality and therefore playing into the hyped up narrative for this bull cycle, real world assets. As always, I dive deep into the rabbit hole for you and we will look at the most important data so you're in for a review of Ondo, short and long term price prediction and most importantly tokenomics topped by some technical analysis. Coming up in this episode of Philprints, your one and only stop for crypto finance and trading. With me, you will gain the skill set as well as the mindset to crush the markets. Before we start, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please ask yourself why and do it now. You don't want to miss any of the next videos. Let's get to it. So what's Ondo Finance? At first glance, it looks like your standard DeFi project. You have some staking products, you have an APY, you can get some yield on your coins. But far from that, it's actually as TradFi as it gets. And therefore, this is a classic example of the narrative real world assets, as we have assets outside of the crypto space brought into the crypto space. So what do we have here? As you can see, there are two products offered by Ondo Finance at the moment, with the third one coming soon. First, we have the USDY, which is a US dollar stable coin where you can get an interest rate on. In general, this concept is not new as we can earn rewards on stable coins like USDY. The tether on exchanges like Kraken already. The difference lies in how this is implemented. Every stablecoin has its own mechanisms to secure its value and they are mainly used as an exchange asset similar to normal US dollars. USDY on the other hand is focused on yields. So if you buy USDY you want to have yields in the first place. And normally if you buy USDT or USDC for example you just want to hold dollars on chain so you don't have to leave the crypto ecosystem before buying another coin. Also USDT is backed by the company's US dollar reserves and USDY is backed or secured by short term US treasuries and bank demand deposits. Also they transparently show how this portfolio is built and as you can see it's mainly Morgan Stanley US treasuries and some Stonex US treasuries. For even more security Ondo has third party oversight as well as bankruptcy protections so even in the unlikely event of a hypothetical bankruptcy of Ondo Finance or any other service provider, your funds should be fine. Which, if it holds true, is a big plus. Also, as you can see here, Ondo Finance itself says USDY is not classified as a traditional stablecoin. Instead, it is a tokenized secured Note, unlike with stablecoins, USDY holders earn almost all of the yield from the assets that back USDY. So how to get USDY? Well, first you have to do a KYC. After that, you will be able to deposit funds, more specifically only the USDC stablecoin. Or for deposits of more than $100,000, you can also use USD bank wires. Then you will get a date on which they can provide you with the tokens. On this specific date, you will then get a token certificate that entitles you to receive the actual tokens because the tokens are in a lockup period between 40 and 50 days. After this, you will be able to mint your actual tokens with this token certificate. So now as long as you hold your USDY, they will generate yield. And if you want to get your money out of this token, including the yield, you have to redeem them. For this, you will provide on the finance with your bank details for them to process this request. But there is a restriction and that is you cannot be a US individual or organization. More specifically as stated here in this CoinGecko article, users cannot be located, organized or a resident in any of the following locations, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, etc. Which basically means that the bulk of users will come from Europe, Latin America and sections of Southeast Asia alongside US or UX expats living in these regions. This is actually a very important factor for tokenomics as this restricts potential demand. On the bright side, this should be perfect for risk averse investors who are not native to the crypto ecosystem and want to dip their toes in. Now for the second 
Ondo Finance product, which is OUSG. This will basically allow you to invest into the BlackRock iShares Short Treasury Bond ETF. Here as well, the focus lies on ultra low risk investment options and therefore is dedicated to investors who seek as much safety as possible. This as well can be bought with USDC stablecoin on Ethereum, Polygon and Solana blockchain. But in contrast to USDY, there is a massive restriction and that is that you can only invest in OUSG if you invest a minimum amount of $100,000. After looking at all of this, doesn't feel like crypto anymore, isn't it? But this shouldn't come as a surprise as we are looking at a real world asset project, which as I said, only acts as a medium for something out of the blockchain. When looking at the organization behind Ondo Finance, we can see that the founder and CEO is Nathan Ullman. And on his LinkedIn profile, we can see that he previously worked for Goldman Sachs also focused on the cryptocurrency market and before that he worked at two hedge funds, one being also focused on crypto, which altogether should explain the strong TradFi character of Ondo Finance. One thing I want to mention before we head to the tokenomics is that Ondo Finance also built Flux Finance. In the meantime, they have sold this project, but it still has strong ties to Ondo, being that they only accept OUSG as a collateral. On top of that, you can lend stablecoins to Flux. For this, you receive F stables, which represent the right to reclaim stablecoins plus the interest. So this concept is basically the same as USDY, with the difference that on top of USDC, you can use FRAX, DAI and USDT stablecoin. Also with the collateral function, this means that OUSG can be leveraged on Flux Finance. As you can collateralize your OUSG, receive stable coins in return, and then lend out these stable coins again. Now for the tokenomics, I want to start with the investment rounds. And I can tell you they have very prominent investors. In the $4 million seed round, they already had Pantera Capital. And then in the Series A round, they already got Coinbase as well as the Founders Fund and the first market maker, Wintermute. Then they also had an ICO on CoinList, which is an extremely good sign as CoinList selects their projects very well. As an example, Solana did its ICO with CoinList. And on top of that, just last month, they had an IEO, an initial exchange offering with Gate.io. And this very moment, Ondo Finance is one of the top RWA projects out there. Sorted by market cap, it is the top four project. Ondo is already listed on many important exchanges like Bybit, BitGet, Coinbase, KuCoin and Gate.io and it basically got an instant listing for its perpetual contract on Binance. What's obvious in this regard is that it has pretty high volume, which is good as traders seem to like it. On top of that, Ando has partnerships with other blockchains, for example, Pith Network and Oracle blockchain, which I already made a video about. Then they partnered with the digital asset broker Nonco, and then very recently they partnered with Sui in order to bring USDY to the Sui network. I think it really stands out how well they are connected in TradFi as well as in the crypto space. If we look at the current market cap, we're sitting at around $333 million with 24 hours our volume sitting at around 105 million dollars. The 24 hour volume is as high as one third of the market cap. This is nothing ordinary if you ask me. If we have a look at some other coins, you will see that this is quite different. Sometimes the volume is around 5 to 10% of the market cap or much less. The only coin I'm spotting that has something similar is Manson Network, which is also extremely hyped and looks extremely good. For your information, I also made a video about this project. So to sum it up, I think this shows extreme interest in the project. So if we now compare the market cap to the fully dialed looted market cap, we can see that there is a big gap, which screams for token unlocks. So if you have a look at the allocation first, we can see that it's pretty narrow. There are only four parties who have allocated tokens. There is no position for the team, but I suspect this hides behind protocol development. And more than half of the supply goes to ecosystem growth, which is really extreme. But if this really all goes into projects for their own ecosystem, this shows they look for extreme growth. So now for the vesting schedule, if we suspect the protocol development is the team, they will start to unlock in a year, which is pretty healthy and shows for great team conviction. But if we look at the chart view, we can see that on the finance has chosen to unlock in stairs. This means there will be potential 
big selling events as extreme amounts of tokens will get unlocked on these dates. For example, the first unlock in January 2025 will increase the token supply by 100%, then the next one around 80%, and so on. This maybe explains why Only Finance has good connections to, for example, Binance, as centralized exchanges like projects with these stair unlocks, as retail investors try to short these token unlock events, and then the big players like to squeeze them out by pumping price first, scooping up the liquidity, and then finally letting price dump. Now, this doesn't have to happen. As we can see here with Polygon Matic, this project also had stair unlocks, but actually to be fair, they were in this extreme. For example, the first unlock increased supply by around 30 to 40%, not 100%, and the following unlocks as well. But the point I'd like to make here is that these stairs don't have to result in extreme price dump events. For example, you can see that the first stair unlock was on 21st October of 2019. And if we look at the chart of Polygon Matic, we can see that on this day, pretty much nothing happened besides a sideways range for a month and then a pretty good 3x. Of course, this means this project has to have enough demand to balance this out. So overall token unlocks are healthy for Ondu, but the size of the unlocks is what concerns me a bit. All right, let's have a look at TVL, total value locked. This sits at around $182 million, starting from January 2023, where the project started out, up to September 2023. From that point on, it pretty much stayed flat, which is a bit weird, as this basically means there are no more investors coming in for five months now. But let's remember what I showed you earlier. The USDY product is pretty restricted location wise and the OUSG product is only for investments above $100,000. So maybe the correct customer group is depleted at the moment, but that's just hypothetically. What we shouldn't forget is that Ondo Finance is actually its second version. Before, there was Ondo Legacy. The Legacy project started out in July 2021 and had an all-time high TVL of $137 million, which of course got completely withdrawn as they moved to their second version. And if we take the all-time high of Ondo Finance now this is 227 million. So if we suspect that all the funds of the legacy project went into the new project as well, that would mean that only $80 million are new total value locked. So all in all, until now, the growth is pretty limited. If we take a look at the GitHub page of Ondo Finance, we can see that they have some repositories. And what's striking is that the latest update, the latest commit on their repositories were in November 2023, which to me looks pretty off. I strongly assume that they have private repositories and don't want to show what they're working on. Actually, not that surprising as on the finance, as we have seen, is not your typical crypto project and therefore open source is probably not that important to them. So it seems they like to have their code base private, which I wouldn't count as a problem. So let's now look at Ondo's price chart, which doesn't have too much history as the token started out on January 18th this year. And since then we are ranging basically between 20 and $30 cents, which therefore is main resistance and support. Also, we have this mid range at around 24 cents. So basically you can look at this as an accumulation or to trade the trend either way it goes. With altcoins showing some strength at the moment, it's possible that we break the mid-range. And if the strength continues, we will get new all-time highs for sure. And as we saw with the 24-hour volume, traders really like this coin. If we indeed get the pump alongside market strength, we could look at a first target of $37, which from the current price would be around 55%. If we look at the open interest, we can see that this pump was accompanied by a rising open interest, which is healthy. Now we're getting 
kind of a small divergence while we hit the mid range, which could mean that shorts are building up and we get a small correction, but this is only in the very short term. So now for the long awaited long term price prediction. At first I wasn't sure how to predict this, so I took the number one RWA project, which is Maker, a project which has been around since 2017. We could expect a 5x and when comparing it to Maker's all time high, we could expect a 15 to 16 but we can't say this is too accurate as RWA seems to be a hot narrative for the new bull cycle. If it really picks up steam the same way NFTs did in the last bull cycle, we are looking at heinous gains for RWA projects and if Ondo Finance manages to stay on top of this wave, it could see way higher multiples. So I can't help to say that Ondo Finance looks pretty promising. Of course, it kind of goes against what crypto stands for, but it actually is on par with the ETF developments and the shift and mentality we're seeing and as potentially big amounts of liquidity that will fuel our bull cycle will come through these Bitcoin ETFs, it definitely is a possibility that projects like Ondo will have a good time or better to say RWA projects in general. Of course, we shouldn't forget about things like TVL not increasing for five months now, as well as the pretty steep token unlock stairs, which will increase token supply by 100% within a day and should be closely monitored. But apart from that, we're looking at a pretty skilled team with extremely good connections into the world of traditional finance as well as the crypto space and in the end we have a pretty utility focused project with great plans to build a big ecosystem. For more in-depth altcoin reviews and price predictions click here and click here if you want to see my latest video. I hope you gain massive value and if you haven't already please subscribe now so you don't miss any of my next videos. As always this was not financial advice, please do your own research and due diligence. This was Footprints for you, crush the markets until next time, goodbye.